Now, two pigeons bemoaning the fact you can stream DirecTV satellite-free. These humans can stream all the top-rated national news channels on DirecTV, and now with no satellite dish. This just in. Weather, sports, election coverage. DirecTV has it all, but something is missing. The satellite dish. What are you doing? I'm reporting the news. Back to you, Bob. Here's some news. You're a buffoon. Stream the top-rated national news channels. No satellite dish. Visit directtv.com. Internet required. Top rated news based on 2023 Nielsen ratings. This is The Morning Five. I'm your host, Melissa Ware. This week's guest host giving you five minutes of news and scripture Mondays through Thursdays. Today is Wednesday, October 2nd, 2024. Let's open with scripture. I'm going to read from 2 Corinthians 4, 7 through 12. But we have this treasure in jars of clay, to show that the surpassing power belongs to God and not to us. We are afflicted in every way, but not crushed, perplexed, but not driven to despair, persecuted, but not forsaken, struck down, but not destroyed, always carrying in the body the death of Jesus, so that the life of Jesus may be also manifested in our bodies. For we who live are always being given over to death for Jesus' sake, so that the life of Jesus may also be manifested in our mortal flesh. So death is at work in us, but life in you. May God bless the reading of his word. Good morning. I'm your host, Melissa Ware. I am so glad to be with you today, a guest hosting again. I just have to say I was diagnosed with strep throat last night. And no, nobody else in my family is sick with this. So I somehow got strep throat as an adult. (laughs) And I, I... Oh, I'm on antibiotics and I'll be not contagious very soon, but I also want you to just take some pity on me. So please offer me a pity party right now. Anyways, let's move on to the news. Last night, Senator J.D. Vance and Governor Tim Walz took to the debate stage on CBS. The basic headline is this. It was a refreshingly civil debate, even as stark contrasts were drawn over January 6th, immigration, abortion, and other critical issues. Therefore, if you sat this one out because you thought it was going to be too divisive, then it could be worth the watch for you. Next, on Tuesday evening, shortly after Israel launched ground operations, Iran launched 180-plus ballistic missiles into Israel. The attack came in response to recent killings of top Hamas and Hezbollah leaders, including Secretary General of Hezbollah, Hassan Nasrallah. The United States offered assistance by firing a dozen interceptors from U.S. naval destroyers, The U.S. received no prior warning from Iran and an aggressive warning after the attack threatening further action. However, very few casualties have been recorded in Israel. Despite low casualty numbers, Netanyahu, that's Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu, vows that any level of attack will yield great retaliation. Following the attack, he stated, end quote, the strike will have consequences, end quote. Next, 45,000 dock workers went on strike yesterday along the East Coast in hopes of achieving a substantial pay raise. The head of the International Longshoremen's Association, Harold Daggett, stated to hundreds of the dock workers, end quote, nothing is going to move without us, end quote. The strike will affect some of the country's largest ports, dealing with food, furniture, clothes, toys, vehicles, heavy machinery, construction materials, chemicals, and much more. Last year, the S&P Global Market Intelligence recorded that ILA dock workers unloaded $588 billion worth of imports, more than half of U.S. trade and cargo containers. Just a week-long strike could lead to major supply chain disruptions. Daggett received a proposal for a 50% pay increase over six months late Monday, but declined and thus started the strike. Um, They're holding fast to the ILA's goal of a 77% pay increase over six months. Workers joined the picket line with signs demanding more money and a ban on automation. With the upcoming election putting pressure on Vice on Vice President Harris and President Biden, the White House is urging the alliance to negotiate a viable contract that recognizes the dock workers' valuable work. Finally, yesterday in Mexico, Claudia Scheinbaum, a former mayor and climate scientist, was inaugurated as the first woman to the Mexican presidency. She's also the first Jewish person to lead Mexico. She is a member of the same political party as the outgoing president, and she says she will continue her predecessor's policies. Let's end it there for today, and let's close with Dallas Willard's version of the Lord's Prayer. Dear Father, always near us, may your name be treasured and loved. May your rule be completed in us. 
May your will be done here on earth in just the way it is done in heaven. Give us today the things we need today and forgive us our sins and impositions on you as we are forgiving all who in any way offend us. Please don't put us through trials, but deliver us from everything bad. Because you are the one in charge and you have all the power and the glory too is all yours forever, which is just the way we want it. Thanks for joining me today. As always, the Morning Five is brought to you in partnership with the That Sounds Fun Network and supported by the Center for Christianity and Public Life. See you tomorrow.